guess who's back in crappy lighting for a vlog? This vlog has a mini food haul and what the hell's going on with my cat Coco and a q and A. I I answer your questions. I just picked up a few things from the grocery store, so mini haul. That's so weird. Why do you do that? Why do you lick the cloth bag? I'm a fan of portion controlled packaged snacks. Snackages. Look at these little mini bananas. If you don't want to have fruit flies, then wash your bananas. Saving these ripe ones to make my mom's famous banana bread recipe. The recipe link is posted below. These are fool you, fool you, persimmons. They're non astringent, so they won't make your mouth reject you. And he's back on the counter. Quick and easy ways to get my protein intake up hard boiled eggs, Greek yogurt, kefir. This is also a great way to get your probiotics. Drinking this has helped clear my skin. No more breakouts. The R. X bar, not sponsored, but god damn do I wish. I like these suckers. They might make you feel a little bit suicidal, but the profile is excellent. It is it's, 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 it just rolls right off the tongue. I like the blueberry ones. My guilty pleasure, panda licorice from Finland. It's only five ingredients. They're made with molasses and licorice root extract. I prefer these individually portioned packages over the big bag of the panda licorice because I will snacksidentally eat the entire bag. Going for an afternoon run? I'll take that as a no. Okay. Okay, let's test it. I think that's good now. Here it is. It's dinner time. What's for dinner? Mm, look at that. It's turkey taco casserole with pico de gallo and seasonal vegetables. So in the spring of this year, my beloved Siamese cat Coco, she became very ill and she was admitted to the Toronto Emergency Veterinary Hospital in Scarborough and they saved her life. But they told me that she had stage four end stage kidney failure and that she would have maybe one to six weeks left to live, which was absolutely the most devastating information. I mean, I couldn't even process it. And, and if you know me, you know how much my cats mean to me. I've tried everything from doing daily meditations with her and she lies on my chest and purrs. And I do daily subcutaneous fluids. She gets 50 milliliters under her skin every day. And that was a skill to learn how to do, especially all by myself. And she's on a special diet, but she's not super compliant with it. And I even found a vet in Toronto at Bloor Court Veterinary Clinic who does kitty cat acupuncture cat you puncture. I couldn't believe how much stronger she became after those sessions. So the good news is that Coco has improved and now she's mid stage three kidney failure, which means her prognosis is slightly better. Like maybe I might get a year if I'm lucky, maybe a little bit more. Uh, I mean, obviously there's no crystal ball. We can't predict anything, but I'm just thrilled, 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 thrilled with the improvements. Go Coco. I love her spirit. She's like, fuck you, death. Where's Coco? Bean, do you know where Coco is? I found her. All right, it's time for Coco's follow-up appointment with the internal medicine specialist. So we're off like a herd of turtles. We're gonna go to the vet. So this is how I do the fluids on Coco all by myself. I bought like this harness system. It's not easy, but we, we, we get through it. Good girl. Shit tits. That went well. A one hand only makes this hard. Oh, and it's working. It's dripping like crazy mad. Oh, we're so lucky. Skin of a linky dinky dee. Skin of a linky dee from the morning. We're almost done. We're almost done. We're almost done. Yeah, we, we took it out. We took it out. Let me take off the harness. You don't want to have to keep wearing that. Okay, run and scratch the cactus. Okie dokie. Yes, you did so well. And I'd just like to give a shout out to my dear friend, Jessica, who also is like obsessed with cats. Thank you for being there for me every day throughout this process. Bean likes to eat from the mouse dispenser. 
let's get to the Q&A. I'm answering questions that I frequently receive in my inbox. Sarah, I have all these aches and pains in my body from muscle imbalances I need to fix, but I'm overwhelmed and quit. Do you have any advice? Congrats for recognizing that you have imbalances that you want to address. I know firsthand just how much courage it takes to identify that and the tenacity it requires to do something about it because it's not a quick fix. Being six years into my journey, I feel equipped to answer this question and I'm honored you asked me. Showing up to train, that's up to you. Remember, how you show up to your training is a mirror for everything else that goes on in your life. So when you say, I want this thing, but you choose not to participate in that thing, then you're saying, I'm not committed to the thing I say I want. Now, I'm not shaming any decision you want to make. If you're not ready, then quit. This isn't a judgment of behavior. So if you say what you want and then you choose anything that is not what you said you want, then you're not actually saying you want what you want. So the first step is to get really clear on what it is that you want. So a lot of people have expressed this to me. Sarah, I don't have a lot of extra time to train, so I'd rather do workouts that make me feel like I'm instantly winning because I'm sweating and my heart rate is up. Okay, I get that. The path of least resistance is quite tempting, isn't it? But it's basically a strategy to keep busy and avoid what truly needs to be addressed. To make a long story short, it turns out that success lies in <laughs> translate that. It turns out that success lies in doing the things we avoid doing. I had to do serious soul searching before I was ready to prioritize my well-being over my ego's desire for instant validation. There were two specific things that were catalysts for my corrective movement journey back in December 2016. One. I had a painful, like excruciatingly painful rib injury in December of 2016 whilst doing overhead squats. It hurt to breathe for nine weeks. And this forced me to re-examine the way I was training. Two, bodybuilding.com had featured a video of me teaching an exercise and my left upper trap was huge. My shoulder was visibly hiked up. In fact, this is the photo from that video. I read a comment on this video that said, I don't know why Sarah is a sponsored bodybuilding.com athlete giving advice when she has shoulder instability. This comment, it was so painful because it was true. And this is the first time I have publicly even spoken of this. Hi, hey, Coco. So in December 2016, I decided it was time for me to learn how to use movement to get connected to my body and heal myself. And believe me when I tell you that you will know exactly when it's your time to get started. If you're new here and you don't know my story, back when I was in my 30s, I had excruciating back pain, knee pain, and a messed up shoulder and it made it very difficult for me to do just basic activities of daily living, like going up and down stairs or squatting to the toilet. I knew something had to change. I was literally a 38-year-old woman living inside the body of a 75-year-old woman. And I think about all the years that passed until that moment when I said, holy fuck, this isn't how I want to live my life in pain and visibly crooked. I'm actually ready to reclaim myself and start showing up for myself. And, you know, I had to mourn all the years that I didn't show up for myself. And like, how fucking lucky are we that we're alive and healthy and have the opportunity to show up for ourselves? Coco's on my knee makes me feel important. So this is what I learned from experience. Self-awareness is hard. Thinking about why you do what you do is hard. Accepting that you're somewhere you don't want to be is hard. Waking up to your reality is hard. But that's what will transform you into the person you want to be by facing the hard shit head on. That's what you need to do if you no longer want to feel out of alignment with your body. Wake up to your bullshit so you can reclaim your body. And you know, I really wasn't kidding when I said that your training practice is a mirror for everything else going on in your life. So 
what do you want your training practice to look like? What do you want your life to look like? Question two, Sarah, I am broken beyond repair. The damage is done. What's the point of even trying? I relate to this. When I started my corrective movement journey in December 2016, I was 38. I felt like my body was broken beyond repair. And I knew it would be a long process to try and fix all the decades of damage. I knew I wouldn't get instant results. I knew it would be a lot of work and that I'd have to show up consistently for the rest of my life if I wanted to achieve and maintain a pain-free and mobile body. I was scared I would fail and waste my time. And I wondered if I should just accept my life sentence of having pain in my shoulder, back, and knee. I felt anger towards myself for letting my body become so visibly crooked and painful. I literally felt like a 38-year-old inside the body of a 75-year-old. And being visibly crooked, it made me feel very self-conscious and unattractive. I mean, who would want to date me? I am here to tell you that you are not broken. I was never broken either. I just needed to increase my movement IQ so that I could strengthen my areas of weakness that were holding me back. You know, the human body is amazing and resilient. And I'm proof of that. So no, the damage is not beyond repair. You just need to fill in the cracks in your foundation. And all this takes is a willingness to get started. And I've created a system for beginners. This system is my strength academy. My system first addresses your breathing mechanics because the way you breathe will affect the relationship between your upper and lower body. Then you will learn how to properly connect your breath to your core. You're going to learn about your deep core muscle, the TVA, and why this muscle is so damn important. Hint, it's because it's your body's primary stabilizer. So you're going to learn how to engage your TVA along with your pelvic floor. And if your pelvic floor is weak or overactive, don't worry, I've got you. Then you will learn how to engage your lats, your big back muscles, as stabilizers. And this is not something that I've ever learned in any other training program, but it's important because it supports your shoulder girdle, and this is going to help prevent neck and shoulder problems. Before you know it, you'll be stronger, more mobile, and exploring my intermediate and more advanced programs inside the Strength Academy that teach you other cool things like splits, pistols, pull-ups, handstands, nollie kriya, and more. And this might seem far-fetched, and I get that, because once upon a time, back in 2016, all this stuff seemed so far-fetched to me. I never thought in a million years I'd be able to do these things. But when you improve your body structure, stability, and mobility, it's incredible what you can achieve. You just need to follow the system and understand the principles. And that's what I've laid out inside the Strength Academy. Question three. Sarah, the gap between where I currently am and where I want to be is massive. This shuts me down and I don't even try. Yes, I know exactly how that feels. But you know what? Doing a little bit every day has a cumulative effect and it will really pay off down the road. You know, all the stuff you see me doing on my social media, none of it came easy for me. I was very stiff. I'm not like one of these people who's hyper mobile. Um, I literally was a crooked, imbalanced mess. I started from worse than rock bottom. Like I couldn't even do an air squat in 2016 without excruciating pain. Like watching this video of me trying to do a barbell back squat in 2016, it's, it's painful to watch it. The only reason why I made it as far as I did is because I committed to show up every day to make small, tiny 1% improvements. And you know what I did? I celebrated every little 1% improvement as if it was a really big win. I'm like, oh my God, call Oprah. I found the feeling in my lat today that I was supposed to feel. And these 1% improvements, they sure do add up over time. My training practice has done something really beautiful for me. It's helped me get good at tackling hard shit. And this has helped me identify when I'm being a big baby. It's helped me transform into an adult. Let's get real. You won't always have something fancy to brag about from your training sessions, but I promise you the mere act of showing up and engaging the correct muscles will pay off big time later on. 
it's like planting seeds in a vegetable garden. You're not going to get instant cucumbers and carrots, but if you water your garden every day, eventually you're going to get the vegetables. You know, perhaps there might be a hailstorm and it damages some of the garden. It's okay. You can salvage what's left of the garden, start over and still get crops. So how long is it going to take to get crops? As long as it takes. The only way you fail is if you quit. Question four. Sarah, I don't want to do the work. I want an instant fix. Grow up. There are no quick fixes. A chiropractic adjustment, painkillers, and a massage do not fix muscle imbalances. Only consistent hard work doing the right things will solve the root cause of the problem. And that means increasing your movement IQ so you can implement an effective movement practice for the rest of your life. And I love teaching people how to increase their movement IQ. I love teaching people how to be in the driver's seat of their own movement practice. So what does that mean doing the right things? It means having a training practice that will fix your problems instead of feeding them. You will see videos all over social media, such as do this exercise to fix your back pain, do this exercise to fix a tight hamstring. I think it's a misconception that a certain exercise, stretch, or workout will be the cure. You see, it's not what you do, but rather how you do it. I'm going to say that again. It's not what you do, but rather how you do it. For example, I was going to the gym in my 20s and 30s, but because I had no movement IQ, I was actually training and strengthening my compensation patterns. Great job, Sarah. You know, I didn't care back then about engaging the correct muscles. I honestly just didn't know any better. I wanted to get through the motions. Excuse me. I just wanted to get through the motions to feel accomplished, to satisfy my ego. But eventually this took a toll on my body and the end result, pain, injuries, stiffness, a visibly crooked body, and stalled progress. Another misconception, that our bodies will move through full range of motion pain-free for our entire lives. Like it's our free gift with birth. You know, that would be like buying a car and expecting it to run for the next 90 years without any body work or maintenance. I also think it's a misconception that you should expect to have pain and restricted mobility as you age, that this is a normal part of aging. Like my grandparents always said, wait until you're our age, and then you're going to have back pain and this and that. Look, the only reason why your movement and posture would decline is if you're doing nothing to train your body's structure, stability, and mobility. I am 45 years old, and I have better mobility than I did as a little girl. I spent my 30s in pain. Now I'm 45 and pain-free. You know why? Because I'm consistently training my body's structure, stability, and mobility. I show up for myself so that I won't decline. If you aren't listening to me, then listen now. Your body doesn't have to decline with age. That's a choice to let it decline. From my own personal journey, I can tell you that mobility is the fountain of youth. It will dictate your quality of life as you age. Less mobility equals less quality of life and more pain and more injuries. But there is a caveat. You cannot build mobility on an imbalanced body. Let me say that again. You cannot build mobility on an imbalanced body. You can try, but you'll break. I know from experience. You first have to build your body's structure and stability. Having no structure and stability is the equivalent of trying to build a house on sand. So let's take a look at the strong fit S pyramid. We have structure at the base of the pyramid, stability in the middle, and then at the top is specialization, which is mobility. So you can see there's an order of operations. You first have to learn how to fire deficient muscles and build structure in these muscles that are on vacation in Mexico. Hello, deficient muscles. The vacation is over. You actually have to get to work. So once you can start firing the muscles, then you can start to learn how to use them so that you can stabilize your body. And then once you actually have the ability to stabilize your joints, then you can actually increase the range of motion of the joints. So the person who has the widest and the tallest pyramid wins structure stability mobility all of my strength academy programming is based on this concept fix of water and number five 
Sarah, I'm afraid of making changes. I'm afraid I'll gain weight or lose my gains if I stop what I'm currently doing. This is actually a really common barrier preventing people from getting started with the Strength Academy. And I relate to this because it's what held me back as well. So no judgment here at all. You know, I didn't want to stop doing my weights and cardio regimen back in 2016 because I was terrified that I would gain weight and lose my hard earned muscle. But here's the truth about 2016, Sarah. She was a slave to her workouts because she knew she would gain weight if she wasn't burning a certain amount of calories each day. It was a numbers game. And as a result, I was training in spite of myself. Do you know what that means to train in spite of yourself? I'm sure you know lots of people who do this. Maybe you are even guilty of doing it yourself. I was. It's when you go to the gym, but it's not as an act of self-love. For me, I was actually making my body unhealthy in the process of trying to achieve an ideal body. There was a lot of self-hatred. So in 2016, I actually needed an intervention. I really needed to get my priorities in order because I was prioritizing an exercise regimen that was feeding my problems instead of fixing my problems. You know, you have to basically learn how to want what you need instead of needing what you want. So all I've been doing since 2016 is my Strength Academy programming, and I have lost 15 pounds without even dieting as a result of training like this. And why does this happen? It's because if you want your body to transform, you first have to transform your movement patterns. And no, I'm not like an alien that got alien results, or I'm just lucky because I never had kids, or because I haven't gone through menopause yet. Let's take a look at Kim, who's in her mid-50s. She's gone through menopause. She's had children. And her body completely transformed during the Strength Academy. When she first came to me, she was pissing her pants every time she would sneeze. Look at how much her body has changed. She couldn't do pull-ups before she joined the Strength Academy. That wasn't even her goal when she entered the Strength Academy. She just wanted to stop pissing her pants. Like this was beyond her wildest dreams to become this movement Jedi. That's what she calls herself, the movement Jedi. She's so incredible. Now let's take a look at Julie. She's also a mother, 38 years old, and she couldn't do anything when she first joined the Strength Academy. And what it was that actually made her join was this notion of becoming completely pain-free and reclaiming her body. Everybody in the Strength Academy is so inspired by Julie's transformation. She consistently shows up week after week. And it's obvious, like, she went from not even being able to barely air squat to being able to bang out pistol squats on both sides. I mean, she's learned the splits all three ways. She's just a complete badass. And you can see her body completely changed. And now let's take a look at Tyler, who's also been in the Academy for three years, just like Julie and Kim. The key point is that they're staying the course, okay? You don't get results by doing something for four weeks, okay? You got to like keep showing up for the rest of your life. So Tyler clearly did not lose his gains or his strength. Look at him. He's stronger than ever before. All because he worked on his structure, stability, mobility, increased his movement IQ, and now he's in the driver's seat of his own journey, and he's been able to graduate and go on his own, which is why I do what I do. Also, deadlifting over 400 pounds beltless is pretty freaking awesome. You know what his belt is? His TBA. So no, you don't have to completely quit what you're currently doing for your fitness regimen. I had to temporarily stop because I was in pain. And I needed to take the time to learn how to properly engage my deficient muscles. And once you start to increase your body's awareness and movement IQ, then you can apply this to any fitness activity. So today I enjoy all kinds of exercise programs. I like to dabble with skating or pole dancing or rollerblading or CrossFit, bodybuilding, running, jumping rope, gymnastics, yoga, and more. That's what's cool about having a pain-free and mobile body. You can pretty much do whatever you want. Question six. Now, this is one I get asked frequently. Sarah, did you gain weight when you started your corrective movement journey? Yes, I initially did gain weight, but it's not why you think. The reason why I gained weight was because at that time, 
I was following a very restricted diet. So when I started my movement correction journey, I decided at the same time, I would finally stop starving myself. So when you start fueling yourself for the first time, you're going to gain some weight. And I gained 15 pounds. Some of it was muscle. Some of it was fat. I was able to cope with this 15 pound change in my body because I started to develop respect for my body because of the new things it was capable of doing. You know, one of my very first wins in 2017 was having to remove the orthotics in my shoes because they were hurting me. And in that moment, I realized I had fixed my pronated feet just by building structure and stability in my core, glutes, and inner hamstrings. What a win is that? And my other big win was carrying a 60 pound sandbag for 400 meters without dropping it. I had to work really hard to achieve that. So I had a lot of respect for myself. Showing up for yourself consistently to help yourself heal your ish, that does wonders for self-esteem. Okay, so what happened next? So once my body adapted to my new healthy calorie intake, I noticed something was gradually happening to my body. And if you've been following me for a while, you probably noticed it too. I lost 15 pounds without dieting gradually over time. How? Just by learning how to properly move my body. Take a look at this handstand transformation photo. In the 2016 photo, I was 145 pounds. In the 2023 photo, I'm 130 pounds. But take a look at the change in my body's appearance. You can see more mobility in my shoulders. Look at how opened they are. You can see that I'm now able to properly stack my pelvis over my rib cage. So I no longer have the banana back shape in the handstand. And you can see how much stronger my TVA is. So when a TVA gets stronger, it responds by shrinking your waistline. Look at how narrow my waistline is in 2023 compared to 2016. And the waistline shrinking is a transformation that happens to anybody who actually commits to doing my Strength Academy programming. You saw it happen to Julie and to Kim. Now, because most of my Strength Academy members are not on restrictive diets, they don't experience weight gain. And as I mentioned before, they actually have their waistlines shrink a few inches without dieting. Why? Just by strengthening their TVA, the deep core muscle. And here's a great example, Andrea Kittleson. The key here is to treat your body with love. Stop dieting and exercising in spite of yourself. If you are starving yourself and your body is in pain, then I hope my story helps you find the courage to stop this. And remember, there are no instant results. Success lies in playing the long game with an empowering mindset. Without an empowering mindset, you will gather all the reasons why you should quit and you will quit. Number seven, last one. Sarah, I'm afraid of failing. Ah, yes, the fear of embarrassment and frustration that comes with sucking at something new. You know, this stops so many of us from even getting started. I'm often guilty of this when it comes to learning new skills. And that's why my corrective movement journey has been so healthy for me. It's helped me build healthy self-esteem by learning how to learn skills without saying cruel things to myself. You know, we all start somewhere. I did. And I think it's hella sexy to be a beginner. In fact, I am so proud of 2016 Sarah for putting herself out there, even though she looks like an idiot half the time. That took courage and vulnerability. And I think that that is more sexy than watching me do some of the incredible things you see me doing today. Courage is sexy. I'm sure you would agree with me on this. The decision to get started is much sexier than the decision to never get started at all. Tyler, Julie, Kim, and I are proof that if you keep showing up, Eventually, you will develop abilities that surpass your wildest dreams. And you know, I always say time is going to pass anyway, so you might as well use it wisely. Now, this is important, and this is something I tell every single Strength Academy member when they join my program. Approach new exercises with a curious mindset. In fact, you're not even allowed to formulate an opinion of your performance with a new exercise until you've done it at least 300 times. Instead, I want you to focus on what you're trying to feel in the new exercises. So do something at least 300 times before you formulate an opinion of how you're doing it. And if you do feel self-conscious trying new things, then this is my advice. 
and I follow my own advice on this. I like to train in the privacy of my home. No one can see me. No one can judge me. I can put all the focus on what I'm feeling instead of worrying about how others are perceiving my body and movements. You know, the Strength Academy workouts don't require a lot of space or equipment. I can do my workouts in a hotel room. All I need to do is pack some yoga blocks and some resistance bands. My Strength Academy program has a massive library. It moves you from beginner to intermediate to advanced. And there are different styles of workouts to meet your needs. Some of them are written workouts and other ones are follow along video routines. I think the best feature of the Strength Academy is the mindset training, because I mentioned to you before, without the proper mindset, you're just going to gather reasons why you should quit. Now, this is my best advice, and this is something that my mom often just yells at me every now and then. For God's sake, Sarah, just pick something and do it. And my mom is right. Even if you didn't pick the right thing and you're taking the wrong action, well, guess what? The mere act of taking the wrong action will eventually lead you to taking the right action. Another great piece of advice came from my sister yelling at me. Don't you just love my family? As she said to me, Sarah, in the time it takes you to complain about something, you could have already made some progress by taking action. She's right. So another way to put this, words equal failure of action. Words equal failure of action. So shut up and get to work. Or as one of my pole dance teachers once said, point your toes and practice. Remember, none of this came easy for me or any of the advanced athletes you might follow on Instagram. They did their time. I'm doing my time. I'm still doing my time. And as I always like to say, time is going to pass anyway, so use it wisely. Like 2023, Sarah is so damn glad that 2016, Sarah got this party started because I am a completely different person than I was back then. Back then, I was a victim. Today, I am a victor. I am a challenge tackling machine. I actually think I'm a movement badass and I'm proud of myself. I'm really proud of myself for building healthy self-esteem, putting myself out there and doing something for my own body as an act of self-love. I bet you 10 bucks I'll be that 70 year old still doing handstands. It's time for some concluding thoughts. Let me think about this. I'd say our biggest problem today is that we're all a bunch of big fucking babies. You know, what are you willing to struggle for in order to get what you want out of life? Nothing worth having comes without sacrifice, without pain, and without delayed gratification. So if I were to summarize this video, I would say success lies in what you avoid. And the problem is you might not know that you're avoiding something because you don't know what you don't know. And if you actually made it to the end of this video, you're fucking awesome. Like, honestly, I want you to join my academy because you're my kind of person. And in fact, I'm going to give you a discount because you came all the way to the end and your coupon code is going to be YouTube 15 for 15% 15 off of your recurring membership fee. So thank you for watching and subscribing and all the things that you're supposed to say at the end of the video. And for people who've been subscribed to me, some of you I know have been here for over 10 years. Thank you for your support all these years. It's been one hell of an incredible journey. And I really appreciate it when you do interact with me and ask questions because it helps me figure out what content to create. But what's going on in here? Is it Whisker Wednesday? Are you guys in Mexico?